last uh, few hundred years, we have seen more uh, uh, sages, gurus, gods who are male. Oh. My, who are male. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we see enough uh, women in these roles? There is no dearth for goddesses in this country. There are more goddesses than gods, if you do not know this. If you go from village to village in Tamil Nadu, for every village there is a different goddess, you know? For every village there is a different goddess, but for every village there is no different god. So goddesses, there are more than gods in number, so your information is wrong. If where do you come from, Delhi? Huh? You come from Delhi? Singapore. Singapore. Oh, you should move to Tamil Nadu <laughs> There are lots of goddesses, all kinds of amans. About sages and seers, There have been many in the past. These days, uh, because uh, generally from young age they're trying to be beauty queens, they're just missing out on the other training. <laughs> because uh, the commercial campaign as to how a woman should be, in the world is totally misguided and westernized and I think a huge amount of the female population is completely taken by this. Lot of them would approach it maybe after they are fifty and they have no hope of being beauty queens and <laughs> At that time they may come, lot of them are coming to us. But there are a lot of young women also with us who are doing wonderfully well <laughs> So, experientially there are many, many women among the Isha meditators who are really in fabulous states, fabulous states of experience. So you can call them as seers or seeresses in their own ways. Gurus, no, women will not make good gurus nor will men make good gurus. Unless you know how to be beyond the two, you can't be this. If you're a man or a woman, if you're stuck with your gender, then there's no chance of being a guru because you're looking at the mechanics of life in a completely different way. You're just looking at life as life. Being masculine, feminine is only question of percentages. Every other part that a woman has, man also has, except one or two parts, isn't it so? Yes or no? So the difference is very little. You have given too much attention to reproductory organs, that this has become a big event in your head. If you… if you just pay attention to life, you wouldn't be paying so much attention to reproductory organs, isn't it? If you must identify, it's not good to identify yourself with some body parts, isn't it? When you all the time go about, I am a man, I am a woman, you are identifying yourself with body parts, isn't it? If you must identify with body parts, I would advise at least choose the brains, not these things which make you a man or a woman. <laughs> So, women will not make good gurus. Men cannot do at all <laughs> So leave that area alone. Don't take men and women there, it doesn't work like that. You being a man or a woman is only for a few purposes in life. 
Yes? Only for a few purposes you need to be a woman or you need to be a man. For rest of it, you just need to be a human being, isn't it? You just need to be a life here. All the time you're a woman, all the time you're a man, this is a disease. This is an ailment, this is not gender. This is a certain ailment in your head, it's not in the body, it's in the head. Once your sexuality gets into your head, that's called perversion. If it's in the body, it's a natural process. If it's in your head, it's a perversion. For most people it's gotten into their heads. What does it matter to you? What kind of body parts a guru has? Is he useful to you or not? That's all the question is, isn't it? Isn't it so? Mm -hmm.